you know what I mean? The night that they got drunk, did the, we did the Iraq Pong scene where they dance and whatever. It was just the funnest night filming I've ever had. And I shot Mamma Mia. I put Sharon in a helicopter, and this was the more fun than that. In four days' time. Our daughter's gonna marry a guy she just met in Bali, millions of miles from home. I just really wanna kiss you. It's like I looked up for the first time and realized everything I ever wanted was right in front of me. She's throwing her career away. Just like her mother did. So I'm the only one who can stop her. She doesn't listen to him. Oh, champagne. Oh, two, please. Just leave the bottle. Thank you. So, so you're the screenwriter as well as the director. Yeah. What um, brought you to this story? What did you want to, how did it come to you? It came as a response to the pandemic. It was, I was just struggling to write. Anything that I was writing before the pandemic started suddenly seemed completely irrelevant mm. because the world had changed. Uh, and I was never going to write Contagion, the movie, or that kind of the pandemic movie. That's just not, other people do that much better than me. And so I started trying to think about ways to make people laugh when they did eventually, as they hopefully would, go back to the cinema. And um, so this, and then I talked to my friend Sarah, who's the producer on the movie, and we came up with this. And with the idea was, I was like, it should be George and Julia. It should feel like the sequel to a movie that was never made, that you never saw. But it should be, you know, it's, that's the way to do an older romantic comedy, is to sort of reference, and you know, a young, a youth that they had. Do you know what I mean? And so, um, so it was always them, and that was central to the concept. It came very fast and very easy, I have to say. And then. Uh, I wrote it with my friend Dan and we sent it to them and the thing that you never do is send it to two actors at the same time you just send it to one and try and get one and if you say in your letter this is also for the other one if the other one says no then you just look like a gibbon <laughs> but luckily they both said yes at the same time mm -hmm. so um, they rung each other and were like should we do this and mm -hmm. so I got the call that you know, subject to a, a zoom chat that they were gonna uh, do it so um, yeah it was amazing promise no mean comments pretty sure you don't win anything for eating the whole pig no arguing get up, get up, get up. no passive aggression what about aggressive aggression try to keep the snoring down i have a nasal strip ah. It's a mystery, you're still alone. And they have incredible chemistry in the film, you're right. It does feel like a follow on. They're genuinely like brilliant film. friends. I mean, yeah. re you know, really brilliant friends. And you can fake that, and they're, they're brilliant actors, so that you can fake chemistry to a degree. But I mean, every day, they just hang out and laugh. And there are loads of times they'd be sitting somewhere and chatting, and you'd do a take, and you'd go, okay, we're just going to relight, you know, come around and do it from that side, so it'd be half an hour. Mm -hmm. And generally, actors will, you know, not rush to their rooms, but sort of head off to their. But they would just stay on set, just sitting, chatting, laughing together. Yeah. And um, yeah, they have a hoot. And so you're just trying to kind of. My terror was that I wasn't catching it. You know what I mean? The night that they got drunk, did the, we did the Iraq Pong scene. Mm -hmm. where they dance and whatever. It was just the funnest night filming I've ever had. And I shot Mamma Mia. Yeah. I put Sharon in a helicopter and this was the more fun than that. And so, Two um, great soundtracks as well. Yeah, and yeah. so that was, and then you're just terrified that you haven't got it because they're just genuinely cracking each other yeah. up. Yeah. Mom, Dad, this is G'day. I'm supposed to ask you G'day. You learned that to make me look bad. You don't need my help there. We brought Mamma Mia, your sort of filmography yeah. is I, I find often they're as much travelogues as they are know, narrative stories. Just, yeah. What is it that draws you to that? And how do you approach, especially in this one, it, it's, it's very much about the culture and about you yeah. know, um, the marriage ceremonies and things like that. How do you approach researching that and then presenting that in such a celebratory way? Uh, research, thank you very much, by the way. Um, research and respect, hopefully, and humility, and you just ask lots of questions and you absolutely make sure that um, the truth is, is more important than the drama. You go, what I'd love is this. And if they go, yeah, but that doesn't happen, then you don't do that. Do you know what I mean? You don't. And so you just listen and try and, you know, but there's nothing more beautiful than admiring another culture's rituals. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing more lovely. It's my favorite scene in the movie and there's no words in it. It's just watching the beautiful rituals that they have in the wedding when the kids get married. So, um, yeah, that's part of the joy of it is hopefully trying to represent it right. and working with people and there's some so many non-actors uh, in it which is amazing for George and Julia it's a long time since they'd worked with the woman who plays um, Max's mum is a passport officer in Brisbane oh, wow. and the guy who plays his dad was actually a cultural consultant in the movie and he was talking to me one day about wedding rituals and we hadn't cast the dad we couldn't find him and as he's talking, I'm sitting there thinking, God, you're so handsome and charming. And so at the end of the meeting, I was like, would you come up to my office and read a bit for me? And so he came up and did that. I was like, brilliant, you got the part. And so, um, yeah, respect, hopefully. So what's the plan? I say we steal the ring. 
I think that comes through in the film as Thank well, you. as does the beautiful scenery, beautiful colour throughout the film. Why would you want people to, to make sure they come out and see this on the big screen? I think we deliberately set out to make a big screen movie. I mean, you know, try and tempt people back to the cinemas because, you know, it has the incredibly glamorous uh, actors who are beyond gorgeous and beautiful locations. And hopefully it's, there's nothing nicer than laughing in a big room with lots of people. Is that your favourite thing about being in the cinema, being that sort of collective? Yeah, laughter, laughter or song. I mean, doing a musical was amazing. Um, mm. But so, yeah, hearing a bunch of people laughing together is amazing. And it's just not the same in your sitting room. Yeah. And so we set out to make it widescreen. We set out to make it as gorgeous as we could. I think you've really done very well. Thank you very much indeed. Very much I appreciate. think that's all my time. So oh, thanks damn. so much for your time. We could do this for longer. Yeah, I would like to. Not for the faint of heart. This is not his first rodeo. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Can we get something a little more age appropriate for these two? Here we go. Which okay. one? There's only one. I see two. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no, no. Dad, please stop doing that. Oh my God. I'm praying for an asteroid.